Hello and welcome to the Abroad Japan quiz. By some admission, the most important quiz that you will ever take. For the winner, you'll receive not only my eternal friendship, but a reasonably priced meal at the restaurant of your choice. For the losers, you'll be strapped to a rocket and launched into the sun. Yep. Oh, I've been told we can't do that anymore. So instead, if you don't win, you will not be invited to my next birthday party. Let the quiz begin, and well done, and good luck to you all. I don't know why I said well done. You haven't won it yet. Hello, I'm Team Japan. Welcome to Chris Question. I understand you are the winner because you are best friend. Maybe 10 years? Old friend. Nice ice cold beer. Ooh, easy question. I am very confident, though I don't know Chris that well. I've only been on a few trips with him. I believe that I'm a good judge of character, so I'm certain, I'm 100% certain I will win this quiz. Uh, well, obviously we have the, the UK connection, and across all three journey across Japan, I think I'm the only person, along with Ampan Man, of course, that have spent every day with Chris. It's 70 days without a day off in close proximity to Chris. All right, question one. Hmm. Where does Chris think is the most beautiful place in Japan? Uh-oh, that's tough. Town Street Shimanami and a bicycle street in Hiroshima. Ooh, I'm gonna say somewhere in Tohoku. Miyagi, I'm going with Miyagi again. Sakata. That's because this is his, his homeland where he first came to Japan. So he finds a natural beauty in the city in which he started. I think the most beautiful place in Japan is the Setaruchi Inland Seas. Absolutely stunning chain of islands that go across from uh, Onomichi to Imabari and you can cycle it in a very long, very arduous day. But it's something I highly recommend and uh, yeah, beautiful place unmatched in Japan. So that was my second guess. I've um, been there with him, and he really liked it. I maybe, forgot. maybe I, I answer. You Shim said Shimanami cycling. You said Shimanami Kaido. Mm, that, that's yeah. right. That is yeah. that is that place. Around, that is right. around. Yeah. Around. Is is Sakata near? No, no, no. Nope. No, no, okay. No. <laughs> Starts far, with an far, S. Very far. Like, <laughs> you can see for him. Oh yeah, yeah. Give me that. Too, I panicked. It. I said Miyagi. I don't know why. I don't think he's ever been there. Center. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> this is a mark of shame. I, for some reason, I oh. thought. That was, I was genuinely going to say that. Okay, sure you were. Because it was so, like, and the day we went there was perfect. All right, Blue hard number anyway, two, here we go. I thought it was Tohoku. Question two. Yep. Which neighborhood in Tokyo is Chris's least favorite? Shinjuku City. He don't like. Shinjuku? It boggles the mind how confusing that place is. You can't, no one can meet anyone anywhere. It's just too confusing. Oh, that's Shibuya. He hates that place. Every time we go there, he's like, oh God. I hate this busy place, everybody's bothering me, and I have no place to eat chicken. My least favourite district in Tokyo is Harajuku. It's a great place if you love clothes shopping, but I don't. I just don't. And I never will. That's really close to Shibuya. Yeah, I... Not really. Uh, no, Shinjuku. You said Shinjuku? Yeah, me too. Shinjuku, yeah, Shibuya. Yeah, yeah. But... Wait, 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 which one is closer to Harajuku? Shibuya yeah, yeah, or Shinjuku? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys, I think by proxy I was the closest we're geographically, we're so we're you we're take we're the hearts. Why did you point? choose Shibuya? Zero point. Because he hates people. Oh. Well, Shinjuku's <laughs> got a lot of them. Harajuku, Harajuku, Shibuyaku da. Hey, oh, that's Shibuya. Whoa, 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 did you say it like that on purpose? <laughs> or D Dub? Seagull. I'm going with Seagull. He uh, he loves his drone shots. I think just to get an aerial view on everything. They can nick people's chips as well when they're eating. So. Labbit. I would choose to be a porpoise because I could roll around on a beach all day and to be honest it wouldn't be too different from what I do now. 
Wait, no, a, po a porpoise is a dolphin, isn't it? Uh, Do they roll on beaches? <laughs> I think they're dying. Have I gone my have I gone 39 years thinking what a porpoise animal? is something that it's not? I think that frog and rabbit were relatively close, at least the train of thought, I feel like we're really <laughs> 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 Chris Favorite scent. I'm sorry? His favorite scent? Yeah, easy. Marmite smell. He like marmite. Let's open. Like a smell. Mama smell. Oh, <laughs> of course I first thought lilacs, but that can't be right. So I'm gonna have to say the smell of a freshly cooked ch chicken coming from the kitchen. It's probably mine as well, yeah. Fried chicken, let's go with that. My favorite scent is that of a toasty bonfire on a cold winter's eve because I love Christmas and I love pubs. I love sitting around the fireplace, closely followed by bananas. I think they smell good. Like objectively, they smell really nice. I like, I like banana flavored sweets and milkshakes, but bonfires are still better. Uh, what did you say? Fried chicken. That's what I said, I said fried chicken. Marmite. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you get it right, you get it right. All right, you're fine. I think marmite over an open fire sounds yeah. pretty good. Yeah. To be honest. Mm, caveat yeah. emptor. There you go. Question five. Mm. What is Chris's most used phrase in Japanese? These are tough. Natsuki said they were easy. Let me think of how Chris would say it. Atotamemasu ka? Hai, onegaishimasu. Hai, onegaishimasu. That's for sure. He always demo. Mm. Demo. Demo. Sorry, I'm struggling for a second. Um, no, you got five seconds. <laughs> yeah, the pressure's getting to me, seriously. You know, he's always filming, so when, obviously, when you're filming, you have to have kind of the confidence to go in and go in places and film, or, or you could miss the shot. So I'm going to guess it's something simple, like "shitrishimas" uh, or like you know, "sorry for getting in the way." He's a very polite boy as well, so uh, yeah, "shitrishimas." Let's say that because he's always filming. So. All right, I hate to admit it, but my most used Japanese phrase probably is "famichiki hitotsu onegaishimas." I do say it several times a week, and that's that's not good, is it? Whoops. I said he replied to the guy saying "Atotame maska," and he was like, "Hi, okay. sumimasen, okay, oh, chicken." Onegai shimasu. Onegai shimasu. Question hey. six. Come on. Chris got made the most YouTube video. First YouTube video. Out of there. So I I know a couple of the early ones. It might not be the first one, but it it could be uh, Japanese people trying marmite. Could be the robot restaurant in Shinjuku as well, that was an early one, but I don't think that was the first one. It could be Natsuki falling over drunk in an izakaya somewhere as well. Huge fan of <laughs> Chris's stuff. I know, he's in, his, he's in that room and he's talking about, he's talking too much and it was about um, uh, teaching. What is teaching like in Japan? Damn it, that's wrong. I know I'm, that's wrong. I'm sorry, Chris. Ah, uh, his room outside every morning. No, is it bad video? <laughs> I don't think it's the first one, but I'm just going to guess with uh, Japanese people trying Marmite. My first ever YouTube video was inside my tiny Japanese apartment, and it took a whole year to get a thousand views on that video. And that was only because I put the video on literally every single day to get an extra view incrementally. Um, I was desperate at the time, and I still am. I said it was taken in his tiny no, Japanese yeah, apartment. Doesn't, yeah, absolutely, don't get a stick up. But basically, the only way. winner right now is Natsuki. Well, there's yeah. still three questions left. I'll get woken up by the hawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, you know, it's it's funny. I've never actually been to karaoke with Chris. Be left, not to get, not to get, be left, not tears for tears. It's gotta be an 80s song. Okay, I'm on the right scent. Well, I'm gonna say it's Space Oddity. David Bowie, I should clarify. I know his favorite music, but I don't think it translates well into karaoke. So I don't think uh, Depeche Mode particularly comes across as a good karaoke song. So I'm going to guess Backstreet Boys, I want it that way. <laughs> it's going to be so wrong and he's going to hate me <laughs> so bad. But maybe if you comment enough, he'll sing it for him. Before you reveal the answer, yeah. can I give a late answer? Yeah, sure. So you're not going to get. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it doesn't count. Yeah. But um, what's this? Rasp 
Rasputin. Oh, stop! No, no, wait. It's a camera. Rasputin, it's Rasputin. Shut up. Late answer. Rasputin. Late Rasputin. Forget my previous answer, I was walking and up And I Rasputin. was just kidding, yeah. I was thinking Rasputin. When I said Space Oddity, I meant Space Race. I was thinking Rasputin, Russia, that's what I was going with. It's Rasputin, I knew it, I told you. You're weirdly I wrong. I fucking Backstreet Boys. <laughs> what is wrong with you? That's can I can I get half a point? My go-to karaoke song would have to be Under the Sea by Sebastian the Crab because no other song comes close to capturing the essence of what life must be like under the sea. Sometimes I wish I was down there. I wish you were down there, <laughs> at the very bottom, where no one could hear your lies and your bullshit answers. Under, the, have you ever heard him sing? I've never sung a Disney Sebastian song in the Crab song in his life. He's Should not I? sing. He's never show? sing. No. That. Never. He liar. No hearts. Agreed. Yeah. No hearts. Yeah. Question eight. Hmm. What is his perfect gift to himself? Ah, and um, convenience store and easy food, family market chicken. I mean, you can see it in the production quality of these videos, like keeping up with the trends with camera things. So uh, a new camera lens. It would be to the improvement of his channel. So I'm going to say it would be the newest camera slash lens. The perfect gift for myself would be a camera lens. And in fact, the answer was staring you in the face the whole time. You can see it in the cleverly positioned mirror. There you go. Too many lenses. Why did I buy so many? Not even I know. Well, camera lens. We yeah. got one. We got one. All right. There you go. Who has, a, who has a mini camera? Who has many birthdays? Many birthdays. Abroad in Japan, the Chris's favorite video on Abroad in Japan. It's got to be the Hokkaido video. I mean, I'm not playing favorites, but we did have a lot of fun. It's not that one. It's the Fukushima documentary. That's the one. I'm I'm certain he was very proud of that, and it's a good video. It's the Fukushima do documentary. The Fukushima documentary, I think. That's a very special video. And uh, it's either that or it's filming Dr. Jelly <laughs> in an abandoned uh, train carriage. Although, no, I don't think that's it. No, yeah, Fukushima, I think. Fukushima memories. Everybody looking, sinking, and difficult culture pick up. He is like a clever style. I've been very lucky to do some incredible things over the years. I've uh, got to do documentaries on Fukushima, the tsunami, I got to meet Hyde, got to make Natsuki the movie. But my favourite video is actually one of the simplest, and it is in fact uh, the horrors of Japanese English textbooks. It's a video where I literally came home after school one day when I was a teacher and brought this ridiculous English textbook with me that uh, is just full of loads of spelling errors, hadn't been proofread, just didn't make much sense, and I just made fun of it for about 12 minutes. And uh, yeah, I think the best videos are the simplest ones, and I, I love it. Highly recommend checking it out. One of the best videos on Abroad in Japan. He will not stop saying how much he loves that documentary. A lot of the videos he's talked about, but every time he's interviewed or something, he's like, my favorite video. It's the Fukushima video. Yeah. It's very good yeah. video. He's very passionate about it, like for real. Oh. I thought that was his favorite. Stick that in your yeah, head. Documentary Fukushima channel. No, the A English Strange English Words. Strange English words. Oh, well, that should have been number one. Here, let's balance it out. This okay. Thanks. Question ten. Hmm. Which friend would Chris take to a desert island and why? A. Dorthuddle. Because he could be murdered and turned into a sailing boat. B. Joey the Anime Man, because he's used to dealing with spiders and terrifying insects like in Australia. C. Natsuki, because you both starve to death but have a laugh along the way. D. Connor, because he can cook chicken and broccoli all day. Um, would there be broccoli on a desert island? That would be my biggest concern there. I, that's strange. I wasn't on this particular desert island trip. That's fine. Um, so wa Asia like now. Leo Taro. I'm gonna go with Natsuki. Uh, I think if your fate is already kind of decided for you, why not have a laugh with it? And uh, Natsuki would definitely make the situation more bearable, I think, so. Chris would go down with Natsuki simply because at the end of the day, he's gonna have fun, whether he's making videos in Japan or dying in the desert. Final answer, Natsuki, it, at least it'd be good for a laugh. Mmm, give me my trophy. If I had to take one friend with me to a desert island, um, it would have to be Natsuki. 
because I think if you're going to starve to death and just die on a desert island, you might as well have a little bit of fun along the way. And I know Natsuki would cheer me up, he'd make me laugh and uh, let me die with a smile on my face. And that's everyone's dream, right? Um, although I must admit, the Ryotaro option is rather tempting. You know, the idea of A, murdering Ryotaro, and B, turning him into some sort of raft or some sort of flotation device is all rather appealing and uh, it could be a great topic for a future video. Yeah, it definitely could. I feel like you said Yota. I don't do I am that day off. <laughs> yeah, he's a boy. Same. Oh boy. I think it's got to be Natsuki. <laughs> All right, let's get this over with because uh, I'm happy if Natsuki wins and I got tied with Ian. I, uh, we already assured a tie for each other. Congratulations to you. Insert name here. You are now my bestest friend in the whole wide world. Well done. And uh, get ready to choose a restaurant that's less than 3,000 yen. And I'll take you there the next time I see you in the next year or so. If you got a score more than seven, well done. You're in the top tier of friends. If you got less than seven, I'm disgusted, I'm ashamed, and you're no longer my friend. And you're definitely not coming to my imaginary birthday party next year. Thus concludes the Abroad in Japan quiz. Now get out. How do you feel about not being included in the last question? Yeah, that one hurt. I'm gonna be honest. That one didn't feel good. It was Natsuki, Joey, Yotaro, and I was Connor. Ready I was kind of hoping I was D, and then he went with Connor, and I thought, that's fine. Mm -hmm. A, C, B, what? <laughs> I think, I think, I think traditionally A, B, C, D is the order that works.